Yellowstone's a region shaped by our planet's natural forces. It's one of the most visited national parks in the United States, with millions travelling every year to see its beauty. Yellowstone National Park rangers along with scientists have said that the supervolcano, which can be found directly underneath the park, fuels geysers and mud spots. But a recent discovery has shown them that the volcanic caldera is weakening. According to a recent study, scientists discovered that hot molten rock beneath Yellowstone National Park is much bigger than previous estimates, with the researchers saying that it's around two and a half times larger than previous estimates, with further studies showing that this means the park's supervolcano has the potential to erupt with a huge amount of force, much larger than early estimates. Dr. Farrell from the University of Utah said that these new estimates show that the Yellowstone supervolcano could erupt with a force of over 2,000 times that of Mount St. Helens. This new data told the scientists that the next eruption would be bigger than the previous estimates, with Dr. Farrell saying that by using seismic waves from recent earthquakes that have hit the region, they were able to map out the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, and they found that it's 55 miles or 88.5 kilometers long. He further added that this huge chamber goes 4 to 9 miles directly into the earth, and said there's enough volcanic material inside this chamber, that a new eruption would be much larger than any of the previous eruptions. Dr. Farrell said the following, It would be a global event. There would be a lot of destruction and a lot of impacts around the globe. According to the United States Geological Survey, they said the last eruption to happen at Yellowstone occurred around 640,000 years ago, and due to large amounts of earthquakes hitting the region, as well as magma moving throughout the system, it's led some to believe that we're long overdue for an eruption, and that one could happen any day now. Dr. Farrow though disagreed with these comments, but did say that they think the volcano is definitely going to erupt again, they just don't know when it's going to happen. One scientist agreed with these comments, but did say that just because researchers don't think that an eruption is going to happen within the next few weeks, it doesn't mean that one isn't going to happen within the near future, and said that it's important that Yellowstone scientists conduct as much research as possible, as this will put them in the best possible situation for when an eruption does happen. Thomas Knott, a volcanologist at the University of Leicester in the UK, commented on previous eruptions that have happened at Yellowstone, saying the following, We discovered that deposits previously believed to belong to multiple smaller eruptions were in fact colossal sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions that occurred around 9 and 8.7 million years ago. The younger of the two known as Grey's Landing super eruption spewed hot volcanic glass around 8,800 square miles the younger of the two, the Grey's Landing super eruption, is now the largest recorded event of the entire Snake River Yellowstone Volcanic Province. It's one of the top five eruptions of all time. These two new eruptions bring the total number of recorded Miocene super eruptions at the Yellowstone Snake River Volcanic Province to six. Rather worryingly, Thomas Knott said that their data showed them that these super eruptions happened once every 500,000 years, and that, in his words, the findings also provide little bearing on assessing the risk of another super eruption. Researchers at the Cardiff University said that as of right now, there's not a single model that scientists and researchers can use in order to tell when a super volcano is going to erupt. Dr. George Cooper from Cardiff University's School of Earth and Environmental Sciences said the following Super eruptions can literally start with a bang and collapse of the chamber roof or begin gradually, with hesitancy before escalating into catastrophic activity. Overall, the eruption can be rapid, uninterrupted events over a few days, or an episodic sequence prolonged over decades. The uncertainty associated with these events therefore makes it very challenging to determine when and how these volcanoes may potentially erupt in the future. Thomas Knott continued with the following. 
We have demonstrated that the recurrence rate of Yellowstone super eruptions appears to be once every 1.5 million years. The last eruption there was 630,000 years ago, suggesting we may have up to 900,000 years before another eruption of this scale occurs. However, he notes this isn't super precise, and this doesn't mean that an eruption couldn't happen any time sooner and so echoed previous statements made by researchers in Yellowstone, which is that we need to keep an eye on the data in order to see if there's any changes around Yellowstone, and if there is, they need to be monitored carefully. The eruption of the massive Yellowstone supervolcano will do much more than just emit a large amount of materials from the volcano itself. It's predicted that the massive amount of force and pressure released by the volcano will trigger other pockets of magma to release nearby, in quick forming shafts that will grow in size throughout the volcano's eruption. Though scientists are aware of the fact that the eruption of a volcano cannot trigger the eruption of nearby volcanoes, in the event of a supervolcano and its eruption, the incredibly large amounts of forces and material buildup will lead to pockets of nearby magma vents to form, creating a number of normal volcanic entities that will also spew out large amounts of volcanic materials. Though technically speaking the Yellowstone supervolcano is not triggering other dormant volcanoes, it will continue to form these vents, of which will grow in size and will appear to be similar to that of smaller volcanoes having formed. It's also believed that with a large enough tectonic plate shift, caused by the overwhelming seismic activity that will be caused by the forces of eruptions behind the supervolcano, a number of large events could form along the ridges of the shifting tectonic plains. If these plates shift enough, not only would there be a number of massive earthquakes, but there could be a number of newly formed volcanic entities all across the entire west coast. In essence, this means that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would lead to a number of following eruptions, newly formed magma vents, and a domino effect of seismic activity that could cause the formation of new active volcanoes all along the entire west coast of the United States of which will only exacerbate the issue that spawned from ejected material damage and spewing ash. A lack of crops from around the world, the breakdown of infrastructure, inability to travel across damaged roads throughout the United States, as well as the six to seven year darkness that would follow the eruption, means that at the end of these initial damages, the entire world would begin to enter a stage of total economic shutdown. This will first begin at the center of damaged cities, and the inability for governments from around the world to offer aid of any kind. As the volcanic ash spreads and brings darkness around the world, it will only be a matter of days before grocery stores run empty. So it's important that scientists and researchers constantly watch the data for any changes. With everything that's happened in the last few years in regards to shortages, it's understandable why people would be worried about what's going to happen next. These past few years have been tough for many people, and it's for this reason why people are on high alert. In April 2022, a number of fires were reported to have happened at food processing facilities in the United States, which led many Americans to worry that this could cause a food shortage. Already in the past few years we've experienced a number of shortages, from toilet roll, medical materials, manufacturing and consumer goods, and also certain foods. Some have come forward and questioned why these food processing plants are now catching on fire, with one report stating that there's been a number of strange things happening around these plants. For example, one story goes that a small plane crashed into a General Mills plant in Georgia, the Federal Aviation Administration stated that the unidentified plane crashed within a mile of the runway of the Covington Airport. Sadly, local officials stated that no one survived, although there's still many details that are not known about the incident. Some people have questioned why many news stations aren't covering these topics. In an interview with KSBW Action News, Bruce Taylor, Chairman and CEO of Taylor Fresh Foods, detailed that a fire at the company's processing facility devastated the area, 
saying that it's a total write-off, although they said that they plan to rebuild the area that was affected by the fire. He said that he believes by this time next year they'll have a new plant up and running. The local fire department used drones to get a better idea of what was going on in the area, saying that the fire started on April 13th, and that after initial investigations they think the fires were caused by a welding incident. Once the fire department investigated further, they revealed that the shipping docks were also hit by the fire, and were heavily damaged. Although Bruce Taylor did say that he thinks this area may be salvageable, but did go on to say that the processing floor is not. Bruce Taylor said the following, I thought we might be able to save some equipment that I saw a video of this morning, and it's just a melted pile of steel, so that's a total loss. We've got usually a 14 day shelf life, and so if you have to bring it back up here you take about two days out of the shelf life, so it's not optimal. Although theories have been put forward for what happened, the fire department has not released the official cause. As of right now, officials have estimated that 12 fires have been started at food processing plants in the last six months, and investigations are still ongoing to try and figure out what's caused them. One user said the following, I hope this isn't some messed up new trend where people go to these food facilities and deliberately set them on fire. There's enough shortages in the world right now, and if someone is doing this on purpose, that's really messed up. Fact-checking websites though stated that these fires are not out of the ordinary, and that the reason they're making the rounds on social media is because people are worried because of past events. One site stated that in previous years, no one really paid attention to these fires, but because of all the recent shortages, people are now starting to make these topics trend. They said that something similar happened a few years back with the Amazon rainforest fires, detailing that they've been happening for years, but because they gained traction online, and because no one really knew this happened every year they went viral. They said that it's likely that the same thing is happening with these food processing plants, but noted that people shouldn't worry as investigators have said this isn't going to have an effect on food distribution. Not everyone is so optimistic though. Due to current events playing out in Europe, experts have said that things like grain exports are down massively, noting that they're currently a quarter of what they were a few months back. Officials also said that things like raw materials have soared in prices. One farmer in Snowdonia, North Wales said the following, We're sleepwalking into food shortages and that's a fact. I could take you to 10 farms in the surrounding area now that are turning down the production. Chicken farmers, egg producers, milk producers, even beef and lamb, because prices are going through the roof. We've got absolutely ridiculous fertilizer prices, and we can't forget that half the food produced in this world comes from artificial fertilizer. While John Linville said the following, It's a series of events we've never seen before and it continues to look like it's going to get worse than better. A farmer in England said the following on social media, We really are at breaking point right now. I'm not sure how much longer we can do this. These prices are just too much to handle. The best thing I can do right now is sell my land to some multi-millionaire or billionaire. From a financial perspective, it's the best thing for me and my family. I feel like we've been forced into this situation, because at this point there's nothing I can do. This land has been in my family for generations, and it hurts me that I'll most likely have to sell up, but I can't see a way out of this. Every year it gets worse for us farmers. Prices increase every year people complain about how they're struggling and yet nothing changes. We can't carry on like this. So what do you make of these recent fires and announcements? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.